Hello, lifters, and welcome to episode number 22 of Raising the Bar. In today's episode, we are going to talk all about setting and managing expectations when it comes to your strength training. The idea of managing expectations and that conversation, I think, is so important within the fitness world, regardless of what type of fitness journey you're on, whether you are an aspiring power lifter, competitive power lifter, Olympic lifter, whether you are on a weight loss journey, whatever that looks like for you, it is so key to your own success, not just physically, but also mentally and emotionally to make sure that you are setting yourself up for success in terms of managing the expectations of the outcomes of your efforts. Managing expectations is really going to start with setting goals that are two things. One, they are going to push you and challenge you in order to get better at your respective sport, but they're also going to be attainable and realistic within the time frame that you have set for yourself. So long-term goals and short-term goals, obviously, are going to have different time frames. So depending on which one you are thinking of, and typically our short-term goals are going to be more forefront of our mind. Um, and then that long-term goal is, is always going to be there. However, it may not necessarily be what we're thinking about in the moment. So making sure that the time frame on both of those is going to be realistic. When you set unrealistic goals for unrealistic time frames, you are literally just setting yourself up to fail. And from a mental aspect, when it comes to whatever fitness journey you're on, that the mental plays such a key role in the success that mentally you are setting yourself up to fail. And ultimately, if you continue to do that to yourself, you're going to eventually end up giving up altogether. So clearly no one really sets out with the intention of giving up or quitting. So we want to make sure that we're setting ourselves up for success from the beginning. Um, so what is, I'll, I'll give you an example of what an unrealistic goal would look like. I want to add 50 pounds to my squat PR in one week. If you don't look at me like I'm nuts, you should. Um, that That is a very unrealistic goal. Now, the goal itself of adding 50 pounds onto my back squat that may not be unrealistic. However, the time frame within one week is very unrealistic. Depending on where you are in your lifting career and your lifting journey is going to depend on what the time frame for adding that 50 pounds on to your back squat is going to look like. And I'm going to go into that in a little bit more detail because depending on whether you are a beginner, intermediate, or an advanced lifter, the, the time frame and the amount of weight that's realistic to add on to your total is going to vary. So that relationship between your total and pounds added to length of time is going to look very different for, for a beginner than it would a intermediate or an advanced athlete. Managing expectations from the point of view of a beginning lifter or a beginner lifter, it, it's really the opposite of what it would be for an intermediate or an advanced lifter. So what do I mean by that? Typically, the goals that are going to be set in terms of just straight pounds are probably going to be so far underestimated, and that goal is going to be well exceeded plus some. And that that typically happens with new lifters. And, and when I say new lifters, I'm talking about like people who are literally just starting, um, like don't have any meats under their belt, haven't been lifting for years and decided to become competitive, and they're just like a beginner in the competition sense, but like a true beginner. They don't know what their body is capable of and that that adaptation process like happens very quickly and the strength gains come very, very quickly. The body builds and changes and the body comp changes very quickly. And over time, that process starts to slow down. However, as a new lifter, you know, if, if you do set a goal in terms of pounds, which honestly, as a new lifter, I don't really recommend that to even be your goal in the first place. Your goal really should be to, you know, learn the fund fundamentals of the list and be able to execute them properly, regardless of the weight. However, managing expectations would be just that. Like if you set a goal that, you know, I want to deadlift 135 pounds and you don't hit that, well, we need to take a look at, you know, do we fully understand the fundamentals of the lift? Are there some, you know, mobility issues that weren't addressed? Um, you know, all, all of those other factors that come into weightlifting and powerlifting that new lifters don't necessarily consider. Um, so it's really important to take all of those things into account for new lifters. But I will tell you that like the newbie gains, it, it is a thing. <laughs> uh, new lifters gain strength very, very quickly and have really big jumps in their PRs. As you work your way out of those beginning stages of lifting and start to progress into the intermediate and advanced, unfortunately, those newbie gains are going to be a thing of the past. 
you have a very short window to enjoy that. Um, and then unfortunately with, with strength training, it, it's going to be diminishing returns over time as far as like total that's going to get added to your barbell. That's not to say that you're not going to progress. However, those jumps in PRs and those increases in your total are going to um, become smaller and smaller the stronger that you get. Some other things that are really important to talk about when it comes to managing expectations is what is going on in your life outside of the weight room? Because everything that happens, whether it's good or whether it's bad, um, outside of the weight room is going to impact the way that we perform in the weight room. So if you are... If you set a, a particular goal for a training block and during that training block, you had some unexpected, very stressful events come up, whether it be with family work or whatever, those are all things that are going to impact the way that you perform in the gym. If you, you know, fell off your performance nutrition plan for one reason or another, those are things that are going to impact the way that you perform in the gym. And so all of those things that are then impacting the way that you train is going to impact the result and the outcome of that training. So if you could not give you know, that 100% effort every single time that you step in the rate room because of these other factors, then you need to realize that your expectation to achieve whatever you think you're going to achieve at the end of that training block may look a little bit different. And, you know, if it's things that are out of your control, like work stress, whatever, you know, give yourself a little bit of grace there and just know that it's not that you, you're you not capable of achieving that goal, but there's other factors that are at the time holding you back or just could be a very big roadblock that you need to get over. So mentioning a couple things that are out of your control, I think it's also key to talk about the things that are within our control. And those are the things that we don't necessarily like to talk about because then that just puts the, the result on us, right? So there's nothing else that's affecting you outside of just your own behavior and your own consistency. So when, what are some things that are, are within your control that unfortunately you're just falling short on that is impacting, you know, whether or not you're achieving the goals that you're setting for yourself in the weight room. Um, one would be like, just you're missing your training sessions. Um, consistency with anything as it relates to fitness and honestly, anything in life to be successful, you have to be consistent with it. If you are, you know, consistently missing, you know, two or three sessions a week, you're probably not going to hit the goal that you set for yourself and expecting to do so under those circumstances creates an unrealistic expectation. You're not managing those expectations. Well, if you are, you know, eating like garbage all the time, right? And you're going off of your meal plan and you're not eating those high quality foods and you're not fueling your body the way that you should in order for it to perform at its best, then those are things that need to be considered when it comes to managing the expectations and whether or not you achieve the result that you were aiming for. One of the biggest ways that I find lifters do not manage the expectations properly is they don't take the time to focus on the mobility during the training block. And mobility and working on your mobility, mobility limitations is key to adding weight onto your barbell. I know it does not sound fun. I know you'd much rather just go and hit the weight. And I agree with you. It does not sound fun to me either. I would, I would much rather be lifting weight over, you know, doing the boring mobility stuff. However, it is so important that you take the time to do those things because I can guarantee whatever mobility issue you need to work on is the one of the very things that is holding you back from adding weight onto that barbell and gaining strength in the long run. So if you are neglecting those things and you just keep hitting the weight in, and not addressing that, it, the, the problem honestly is just going to get compounded over time. And what could be corrected with some mobility work may eventually lead to an injury, which then is going to have to be corrected, you know, by either physical therapy or surgery or both. So it, it can compound into a much bigger issue. However, if you're going through your training block, not doing that, you know, that should be the, that's probably going to be the reason why you are not seeing your goal achieved at the end of that training block. Naturally, people are just so quick to look at all of the external factors and don't take the time to self-reflect to see what are some things that I could have done better that held me back from achieving this goal. And, you know, those that that is part of managing the expectation. If you can identify what was holding you back that was within your control, then those are things that you can do going forward in order to have a better understanding of what it's going to take to hit that goal next time. 
And I think all too often we, we look, look at the external because, you know, we're perfect. We don't make mistakes, right? It can, can't possibly be us. However, it, it's really important to, to look internally and see where did I fall short? And that all comes with managing the expectation. That way we can set ourselves up for success in the future. The last thing that I want to talk about is not comparing yourself, not just to other people, but not comparing yourself to who you used to be. And I'm going to say, quote unquote, on who you used to be. And I'm going to talk about that from, from two different lenses. The first lens is just from an, an aging perspective. I 100% support continuing to lift as you age. I will never tell someone to stop lifting because of their age. You, you can be 60, 70, 80 and still be lifting. Like, please do. However, you know, if you are a, we'll call it a 55 year old lifter who has been lifting for 30 years, 30 plus years, right? That's, that's a lot of wear and tear. Like powerlifting is a very, very difficult sport. It's very difficult on the body, not just physically, but also mentally. And, and, you know, some lifters who have been doing it for that long, like I can't imagine, right? Like that, that's a lot of, a lot of stress on the body, a lot of stress on the joints and, you know, just taking into account, you know, aging outside of the weight room, right? Like there's wear and tear from life too. So, you know, as a 55, 60 year old lifter, right? Comparing yourself and comparing your level of strength to what you were when you were 18, 19, 20, obviously is not setting realistic expectations for the lifter that you are today. That's not saying that you have gotten weak. That's not saying that you're no longer strong. That's not saying that you're not capable. That's just saying that what your body is capable of now may look a lot different than what it was 20, 25 years ago. And that's completely okay. But setting the expectation that I need to lift what I lifted when I was 20 years old, that that's going to set you, set you up for failure. And so granted, you know, as I'm sitting here talking about this, I'm thinking of a couple people who are within that age bracket that are lifting more than they did before. But you know, th those are very rare, rare situations, especially if you have been lifting for your entire adult life. The second lens that I want to look at the, the topic of comparison through is lifters who are either post-injury or post-surgery. So comparing yourself, if you are a lifter that has unfortunately suffered some type of injury, whether it was lifting related or not, but it has impacted the way that you train in the weight room, comparing yourself post-injury to the lifter that you were pre-injury. Now, just because you suffer an injury does not mean that you cannot get back to where you were. And it does not mean that you can't surpass and continue to hit PRs. It happens all the time. And all my physical therapy friends can and fellow powerlifting coaches can attest to that. We see it happen all the time. But the way that you approach your training may look a little bit different than the way that it used to. And so that process and the progress might be a little bit slower, but it's really important that you take where you're at now, right? Not who, not where you were before you got injured, not where you were before you had surgery, but where you are now and set your goal based on that. And that is going to help you to manage those expectations. And it's going to help to give you those small wins along the way as you're either going through that rehab process or, you know, you're, you're post the rehab process. And now you're back in the building phase. That building phase might even look a little bit different. You may have to add in some, you know, barbell variations. You may have to work on your box squats versus your full range squats, you know, whatever that may look like. It depends on the injury and it depends on the person, but it's, it's so important to just take where you are at now and try and get the person or the lifter that you were pre-injury, get that, get that lifter out of your mind. Like it's okay for that to be your long term to get back to, but set smaller incremental wins throughout the like throughout the process. That way it's going to keep you motivated. It's going to keep you engaged. You're not going to, you know, feel def feel this sense of defeat because it, it hasn't defeated you. You're still lifting, you're still training, you're still progressing forward. You're just at a different starting place now. And that's completely fine. And if you stay focused and manage those expectations along the way and help to manage the mental and emotional side of that, that's going to help you be successful in the long run and help you achieve those long-term goals, whether it's to get back to where you were before or surpass that.
Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. If you found value in this, please make sure that you subscribe and share on all of your social media platforms. And if you are a lifter who has been following a pre-written workout program and you're loving it, but you're just not sure if you are doing these movements correctly, I am now offering lift reviews where I will identify mobility limitations for issues and provide you with corrective drills for any lift of your choice to ensure that you're lifting as efficiently and safely safely as possible and you feel more confident than ever adding weight to that barbell. I have provided the link to schedule your lift review in the notes of this podcast. Make sure to click on it and pick a time that works best for you. And I look forward to talking with you next Wednesday.